Boxing King Media, we're joined by Kevin Agioko, undefeated middleweight, being compared to Canelo, Mike Tyson, all sorts of big names. Um, Kevin, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm not too bad, mate. Uh, no longer the trainer and just got back back to Belfast. So um, back home for a week just to kind of relax because I've, I've been in camp for 10 weeks. But yeah, no, I'm good, thanks. Has it been the last couple of weeks? Because I'm guessing, obviously, you've just signed with Matchroom recently, so you must have known this was coming. You know, the, have you dealt with the last couple of days, you know, with the announcement going out? Yeah, do you know what? It's been a kind of um, busy last couple of weeks, months, kind of. Kind of, I was out of um, my management co uh, contract and then I signed with a new management uh, group and then my promotional deal was coming up and stuff like that. So we were, we were trying to get that sorted. So it's been hectic, but um, I've been training away, and obviously I've I've, I've seen with Matt Room, and I'm over the moon. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to rewind a little bit because obviously fans love this sort of juicy stuff. Like, um, obviously you were with the Frank Mon for quite a while. You know, you, you you've had what nine fights under under their banner. They they pretty much built you to the point where you know you're ready for title fights or and you to like you know step into the next next stage. Um, you know what what happened there? You know, did did the right after not come along or? Yeah, less than that. We we couldn't um, come to uh, agreement. Um, we we were very close to signing, and things just fell fell apart. But um, as the way it goes, uh, a couple of our offers come on the table once I was out of my promotional contract, and um, thankfully we got things done with Matru. Sweet. Uh, any comments on your time with Frank Warren Promotions, and you know how your experience was there? Yeah, listen, they built me to nine and all. They they got me. Um, I think I'm in the top 12, 13 in, in Britain and, and they got me the great, uh, the right learning fight to the right time at the right time. But I feel like I, I needed a different step in my career um, and I needed a team that was aligned with my goals and, and I have that right team um, around me now. We, like I said, we couldn't come to, to an agreement. There were certain things that um, I wanted in, in contract that were, that would have benefited my career and, and promoted me the best and, and um, they didn't see it that way, so unfortunately we, we couldn't uh, come to an agreement. But I feel like this is the right step for me, and the and the, it was the right move for me. Listen, Matchroom need no introduction. Do you know what I mean? I feel like they're probably the leading promotional com company in, in, in boxing at the moment, um, and probably have been for a while now. So I'm over the moon to have signed with them. Yeah, uh, obviously you've explained pretty well, uh, pretty well there. Uh, obviously the bit to a certain point. And obviously, and boxing is a ruthless business, and you you did what you felt was right for yourself, uh, which is a fair point. Um, obviously, you went to the Matchroom show on Saturday. Uh, I'm guessing was it the first time you met Eddie Hearn? It was, yeah, it was the first time um, I'd met Eddie. Yeah. Uh, how did that go? I saw on Instagram that he, he didn't realise you know your name was pronounced Kevin. Yeah, do you know what he was saying? Um, he was speaking to someone just before to kind of get my name ready. He didn't know how to pronounce it, but it went well. We we just had a a, a quick 10, 15 minute chat on um obviously me signing with them and um what what what's planned for me and and where we're gonna go next and stuff like that. So it was good to meet him and get to know him a bit and and meet the rest of the team as well. You know, fans are gonna be happy with that. They they want to know what did Eddie say to you? He says we want to meet you a superstar. Well, that's pretty sure. And and how's he gonna make you a superstar? <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna get me the right fate at the right time. The right kind of I feel like because I've been in, inactive um the last year, get the the right learning fates, maybe one or two more learning fates, and then um push on and and promote me the best um he possibly can. Like I said, I'm I'm kind of still a bit of a secret um to the general eye. Uh, boxing fans will know me, but he did say that I'm I'm a bit of a secret, so it's his job to. Um, promote me the best, get me on shows, get me seen, and and then it's my job to perform and, and uh, get my name out there. So that's the plan. We, we plan on coming back to um to Belfast next year and, and and build my career back home. That that's the main objective. Um, Belfast has always been kind of my objective to come home and 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 build my career here and and do what Carl Frampton did. Do you know what I mean? I've got a great fan base over here, and I feel like it's unfair for all my fans to always travel even though they may love it it's, it's um, for I want to come back home and, and give them big nights here so Eddie agreed with that and um, that, that's the plan 
that would I be right in saying that was probably one of the key aspects to to your deal that you know obviously made you sound much from the, the fact that they're going to bring some big nights for you back in Belfast in front of your family and friends yeah definitely that was that was probably the main factor um and and saying with match room it was I needed a team around me that kind of um agreed with what sort of goals I I had for myself and, and they did that that we're all in the line with um, that bring me back home would be the best move. Do you know what I mean? There's no point me fighting and building my career in London or somewhere else. Whenever I can do it, whenever over in Belfast, where I'm from and where I have a, a great fan base. So um, he agreed with that, and, and that's that was kind of the main objective to get things going. Okay, uh, I saw an interview of Eddie, Eddie where he's, he said that he felt like he, he let you slip away. He should have signed you when you know when, when you turned pro. You know, how did it feel to get you know to hear in comp- a complimentive um, you know voice bites from Eddie like that? Yeah, it felt good. It, it was an unbelievable compliment for him to say that and and um, kind of compare me to Canelo as well, like people in the past have did. But um, I'm kind of you can you can t- look at that as a negative thing as where he didn't believe in me and when he should have but I feel like as a fighter I had to prove that and um and rightly so it's not it should never be easy um you always have to prove yourself in this game and, and I did that um I, I went away for three years I was with a different promotional group and um I proved to Eddie that he kind of slipped up at that stage and and um he admitted that and and it feels good that he acknowledged that but now I'm with the right team and um things everything happens for a reason so it was meant to be uh, a quick word on uh, your your new manager, Paul Reddy. He's obviously signed Sandy Ryan. Uh, he's got Dalton Smith as well. So he seems so. Like, uh, and the next generation of fighters is signing up. You know, uh, what was the key point in you signing with Paul? When I first met Paul, um, and asked him what he would what 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 sort of plans would he have for me, the first thing he said to me was bring you back to Belfast and and um, and build your career there and. I didn't really need to hear anything else um, as long as uh, my manager's uh, kind of reason to want, want, want him to send me was to build me back in my hometown, then that, that was enough for me. Uh, from from the get-go, he, he, he had the same goals and and, um, and seen the same vision that I have. So uh, it was easy. It was probably the easiest deal um, to get done with, with Paul. We clicked straight away. We get on so well. And we both have that vision of coming back home and, and headlining big shows back back in Belfast. So, um, yeah, I, I mean that's probably as, as much as uh, the matchroom deal is probably going to boost my career so far. Um, I feel like I'm with the best manager and the and the right manager um, that I could possibly be with. And um, Paul's an unbelievable guy, and, and he's did so much for me in the last two months of being with him. Um, or last month I've, I've only been saying with him but in t- terms of talking with him and he did so much for me and, and I, I know he's the right the right guy to um, manage my career Yeah and like you said there, like Keddy he shares the same vision as, as yourself by headlining shows in Belfast which obviously which is key to what your future goals and plans are Yeah that's it um, and that's the team that I need around me the, a team that has the same vision of me, as me do you know what I mean there's no point um, me being with a team that kind of doesn't want to bring me back home it doesn't it doesn't make sense you know what I mean um, if you look at Carl Frampton uh, Michael Conlon and stuff like that they're being brought back to Belfast and, and built here and um, I'm a I'm a young exciting fighter that has a great farm base back in Belfast so it only makes sense okay and uh, it's worth you know most fans will probably know but the, for the ones that don't know obviously you, you sparred Billy Joe Saunders for the uh, fight you had with Canelo that's probably where the Canelo comparison comes from because there's not many fighters in, in the UK or this part of the world that can fight with that sort of style. Um, what did you learn about yourself, you know, during them spars with Billy Joe? Um, I learned that I can hold my own against the against the top level. Do you know what I mean? Um, it was an unbelievable experience for me to go out and, and spar Billy Joe, and I learned so much from from that training camp and and just learning small tricks off off Billy and picking up. Uh, knowledge in, in their sparring so um it, it it taught me a lot in in terms of what i know about myself or what i've proven to myself um and also what i've gained from that do you know what i mean i've gained so so much experience and obviously i've got to ask you because canola's fighting this weekend you know how do you see that fight going with the caleb plant i think caleb plant's a very good fighter but 
I just think Canelo's levels above everybody. I mean, he's just he's got a bit of everything. He can box, he can fade, unbelievable head movement, great feet, um, fast hands, and he just does everything well. And I feel like he's improving with every fight, even at he's thirty one or something like thirty one, thirty two. He's still improving with every fight. If you look at the last ten fighters he's beat or something, he, he he's just wiped out two divisions, three div- divisions. You know what I mean? So, um. He's an unbelievable fighter, so I would I would definitely favour uh, Canelo for that. Maybe a late stoppage. Okay. Uh, with regards to yourself, um, I know you previously you've, you've told me that you were considering going out to super welterweight. Um, are you going to stick to middleweight, or do you think you're going to try and get super welter? No, I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick at middleweight. Um, for now, uh, it's something that we spoke about with Freddie. Spoke. I've spoke to my manager about it, and my team in general, my coaches, strength coach, nutritionist, but. I don't feel like there's a point going down the super middle whenever in two, three years I'll probably be up at middleweight anyway. What's the point of going, of going down and not being able to hold it for the for the future? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to build into a middleweight. So, um, listen, I'm not, I'm not the biggest of middleweights, but if you look at Canelo, he's five foot nine. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm the same height as Canelo, I'm five ten. Um, so, it's it makes no sense to, to go down just because I'm not the biggest middleweight, but I, I punch hard enough to be at middleweight. I'm, and my skills are proven that I can I can hold my own again against middleweight. So um, I'm I'm gonna stay at middleweight for now. Yeah. I already have great visions of you potentially fighting Anthony Fowler in a year or two's time because I think style wise that that's that's a brilliant fight. Yeah, listen, I, I read Anthony Fowler. I think he's a very good fighter. Um, I'm glad I'm glad that he's here. He's moved up to middleweight because I do think he was he had outgrown that weight a long time ago. Um. And it, it just opens up the division even more. Do you know what I mean? He, he'll be in some exciting fights. For now, we're not going down the domestic route. Um, spoke about that with Eddie as well. And he agreed there's there's no point um, bringing an Irish fighter down the British British route or British scene. So um, it wouldn't make sense for, I mean, domestically, but me, for European title or world, world level fights, yeah, 100%. It'll be a great exciting fight in the future. 100%. So letting all the boxing stuff aside, you're back in Belfast in your hometown. What, what's uh, Kevin Ogiaka doing this week? You know, you got a week off out from the gym, so what's your plans for the week? Yeah, well, uh, no, I don't have a week off. I'll, I'll still have sent me my, my training programme over and so is um, my strength coach. I just, I'll not be sparring this week, but um, I'll still be in the gym, but it won't be as in, intense. I have been in camp for the last 10 weeks, so it's kind of a, a, a um, deload week, kind of just not not going too crazy, but I'm gonna catch up with my friends and family. I've been away from them for a long time. So spend spend some time with my friends and family and just enjoy Belfast for a bit. And then I'll be back uh to camp next Monday and and then get ready for my next fight. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, have, have a good week off. And if your mates do try and drag you into some nightclubs, try and hold on. <laughs> I'll I'll hold off on you, I yeah. Do you, you the, do you wanna let the fans know where they can follow you on, on the socials? Yes, you can follow me on Instagram uh, and Twitter. Uh, I think my Twitter is Keenan Jarro. My Instagram is blackfunder.ca. Um, so get on, give me a follow and watch me become a world champion, the first black ass world champion um, in the future, definitely. But I, I was going to mention that. I've got, you know, you say that a lot, first black Irish champion. You know, what does that mean to you? Know, them words, obviously being black and being Irish, that, that means a lot to you, doesn't it, on a personal level? Uh, Oh, it, it means so much to me on a personal level. Um, I can create some history there. I, I hold so much pride in, in, in coming from Ireland. Um, just to be an Irish world champion would would be a huge honour for me. And, and I'm I'm honoured to kind of represent um, Ireland on on the um, boxing stage and hopefully on the on the world stage soon. So it means so much to me. But I, I understand that with being the with being black Irish, um, being a black Irish, I, I can be the first black ass world champion so I can create some history and um it would be it'd be a dream come true to to do so. 100 percent and obviously at Boxing King Media we'll be following your progress all the way to the top. Uh and you know when, when you're a champ holding up four belts hopefully. Hopefully right. that's the plan. Thank awesome. you very much. Kevin thank you so much for your time mate. We're gonna catch up soon. All right. No problem. Thank you very much. Speak soon. Take care brother. Take care.